Hello everyone and welcome back to Dreaming AI. My name is Nuked, and today we are going to learn how to use Embedding, LoRa, and Hyper Network in Comfy UI. Embedding, also known as Textual Inversion, LoRa and Hyper Network are an alternative way to control the style of your images and stable diffusion. It's like fine-tuning the model itself but in a separate file. For example, we have them for a specific type of eye, drawing style, or even a person. I won't delve into the technical details of these models as there are videos out there that explain them much better than I could with more expertise. Instead, I'll show you the practical use of each of these fine-tuning techniques. You can find many of them ready to use on Civitai.com. All you need to do is download them and copy them into their respective folders within Comfy UI's models folder. Um, for this tutorial, I've downloaded very bad image negative for embeddings, add more details for LoRa, and Luisa P. Pixel Art for Hyper Networks. Um, for this tutorial, we'll use a workflow that I've prepared, divided in two simple parts for image generation. In one, we'll apply the additional models, while in the other, we'll leave it unchanged. To ensure the results are comparable, uh, both parts share both the empty latent image and the seed. You can find the download link in the description. Okay, so let's start with embeddings. Using embeddings in Compi UI is done by invoking them in the text prompt, just like an automatic 1111, but with a different syntax. In Comfy UI, we need to use an open parenthesis embedding, a colon, the name of the embedding file we copied to the folder, another colon, and a numeric value representing the strength with which this embedding will be applied to the image. Um, typically, values ranging from 0 to 1 are used. The higher the value, the more visible the modification from the embedding will be in the resulting image. Of course, there are also embeddings designed to be placed in the make it a prompt to used to remove something instead of adding it. Let's apply very bad image negative to the negative prompt and see the result with and without it. Um, well, I'd feel the difference is, is quite evident. You can, of course, use multiple embeddings simultaneously. Now let's move on to LoRa. LoRa stands for Low Rank Adaptation. And similarly to embeddings applies a modification to the model's output. Speaking of preferences, many people prefer to use LoRa because it seems to have a more impactful and consistent effect on the output. To use a LoRa model, we have a specific node called LoRa Loader, which shows us the list of LoRa detected in the folders scanned by CompUI. It takes both the clip and the model from our check my loader as input and returns the same, but fine-tuned. So let's select our LoRa in the loader. In my case, add details. Uh, just like with embeddings, but a bit more annoying, you can use multiple LoRa models together. To do this, you will need to stack the LoRa loaders one after the other. Also, the LoRa loader has two parameters that you can adjust to regulate the intensity of the LoRa's influence on clip and the model and therefore the result. Uh, as far as I know, there isn't a precise rule on how to use these parameters, but I recommend testing them as you go to achieve results closest to your expectations. Like embeddings, let's try a test with and without to understand how influential they are in the output However, let's align the negative props so that they're the same in both images. 
Now, let's generate the image and see the result. Let's try with different intensities. I'd say the difference is perfectly visible. Finally, let's move on to hyper networks. Uh, hyper networks are probably the oldest technique among those mentioned conceived by the developers of novel AI, but in the last few months it seems to have been somewhat neglected. The application of a hyper network is very similar to that of LoRa. Um, we have a specific component called hyper network loader where we should input our model, which will then be returned with fine tuning applied. The model output, like in the case of LoRa, should then be connected to the usual sampler. And so let's try Luisa Pixel Art and see the result. Well, I'd say the pixel style has been applied quite well, although the image is somewhat different. That's all for today. Please consider liking and subscribing if you found this tutorial useful. Um, also, if you have any questions, please let me know in the comments below. I'll be happy to help you out as much as I can. And until next time, keep dreaming. dreaming.